Hello <coughs> and uh, welcome to another indoor video. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, we're indoors. We're still on lockdown. It's still COVID-19. It's still April and I'm filling up some space and some time. Um, the plan for this video is something a little bit different for me and I may struggle as I'm going through it, but I'll do my best to make it uh, work. But it will definitely be Compton style, that's for sure. Um, I put on Facebook uh, the other day uh, last night in fact saying that I'm you know I'm heading back to work soon after the isolation period I've been at home um, I'm a key worker so I need to go back to work as soon as I can um, yeah, I put on a, I put on Facebook basically inspire me um, what can I make a video of um, and what would people like to see I've got lots of inspiration from other videos other photographers and stuff like that but I just wanted to find out what my followers or people on my Facebook are interested in and I had a couple of silly comments like uh, do a Top Gun from Graham can't be doing Top Gun um, I had quite a few comments about macro photography um, lots of people are doing macro so I'm just going to avoid that uh, Anthony Hart um, replied to a comment uh, replied to the comment and basically asked me to look at images I did in the last six months now as a bit of a treat to Anthony and the second Anthony who also agreed he said definitely your best images um, and why I stumbled across them and blah 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 so I'm gonna actually switch over to the computer now I'm gonna log into zoom and I'm gonna have a quick chat with the pair of them Anthony 1 and Anthony 2 and they can explain what it is they put on Facebook and what it is they'd like me to do so yeah bear with me Oh dear, <laughs> it's not looking good, is it? Looking great, is it? <laughs> we a winch, winch and heart. There he is. Hey, <laughs> what were you doing? Uh, Video in the back of your screen or something? <laughs> <laughs> it defaults for a camera that doesn't even exist for some reason. <laughs> yeah, you've got to do your iron in the back there. Get your iron in finished first. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> next job. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, let's do this because we only get 30 minutes on here anyway. So, Anthony, okay. meet Anthony. Anthony, meet Anthony. Hi. Hello, Anthony. How are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, this Zoom thing's quite good. I'm getting quite used to having sort of video chats now with different people, which is uh, pretty handy. So, uh, yeah, it's all Never good. Even, um, no, yeah, inspiration. No, you can, both of you come up with the same idea, really. Or Anthony Winch came, you know, sort of agreed with your comment. Yeah. Um, that it's a good idea. So, I'm going to have a go at it. And I picked a couple of a couple of images from this year anyway to have a look at, but both the images you both picked I thought was quite good. So I'll go over to you, Mr. Hart. Um, explain your first question that you put on Facebook for us. Um, basically, I put on Facebook this morning. Um, yeah. um, time lapse. Uh, Robin Hill mentioned time lapse, and again, it's not easy to do a time lapse in my back garden. There's not a lot really going on. Um, oh, Mr. Rose just come on as well. He said sunrise, sunset, night sky. It's just, yeah, not too easy to do a time lapse. Um, but Anthony Hart, who's with us now, he's going to, on my screen, you're at the bottom. So uh, he's going to mention what you put in your comment. Go for it, Anthony. And hello. And say, uh, we have met before. We've done a, you've done a yeah. one to one with me, didn't you? So, uh, yeah, yeah. So what was your suggestion then? Well, the suggestion really was to, uh, if you could talk through one of your top images, one of the yeah. images that you like, maybe, uh, and tell us what your inspiration for it was, what the challenges were, how you came to, to sort of come up with composition and take that image. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I quite like the idea. Um, you mentioned sort of picking sort of images in the last six months, didn't you? Um, yeah. And yeah, you sent me a link. Uh, Facebook link to one of my images and it's the image that I took at Brighton um, yeah. down by the pier or down by the old pier um, that's quite a good a good image to sort of go by so yeah I'll I'll bring that one out of the archives I'll find the image I'll pop it up on the screen in a little while and uh, yeah I'll talk about the inspiration behind it and I will be honest at this right precise moment it wasn't my inspiration initially it was actually Denise's she spotted the image I think I may have mentioned it in the video and uh, so yeah I thought yeah I'm gonna run with it I thought that's a really good idea and I just played with the idea and modernized it around where I was seeing it um, so yeah that's quite a good idea um, and then uh, Mr. Winch we haven't spoken before we haven't met before um, no, never. You, you, uh, you actually agreed with the comment and you said uh, you definitely 
fancied me having a go. So what what what, you yes. know, what did you basically put? What was your ideas behind the um, comment? Okay, basically what I'd, what I'd like for you to do there, Paul, is obviously uh, go back to the colour coats arch summarise. Yeah. Um, obviously explain obviously how how did you stumble across the image? Uh, what sort of time did you leave in the morning to get there? Did you have to take in the, the distance of travelling? Um, what made you come across that composition? That's actually a really, it is actually quite a good a good question and you obviously put some thought into it. Now that was taken back in 2018 and I did yeah. the video on it, which I'm, I'm sure you've seen. Um, no, I haven't yeah, seen that one. Yet, have you not seen that video? Right? Well, I, do ex I do explain most of it and I'm going to take a naughty point badge for not watching the video. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do is I actually put a, I put a link in the video up in the Pretty screen good. now so people can actually check back on it and have a look. We did actually explain at the time roughly where we were, what we were doing, and how we went to get the image. But it's a good image to show because it's not it's not just a photograph. There was a lot of, there was a bit of planning that actually went into that, which I don't do a lot of. Um, so a bit of planning involved, a little bit of wrecking involved, a little bit of searching involved. And so yeah, it's a great image to sort of go um, to work on. So I'm gonna do those two images after this conversation. I'm getting to get them up on screen. It's going to be a bit Compton style, <laughs> a bit rough around the edges, because I'm not very good at stuff like this, but I'll do the best I can and try and explain those two images for you. And same goes with anyone else. If, if you're interested in doing these sort of things, please come on and ask us. I'm more than happy to bring you up on screen. You can ask me a question and I can, you know, have a look at an image. So it's, it really is a good idea. So, yeah, thanks for that, you two. Uh, that's going to give me something to do this afternoon, isn't it? Um, and I'll do my best to try and explain it and a little bit of maybe a processing of what I went to to try and process that image as well because I'll yeah. show the raw file and I'll also show the, the finished article. Um, and yeah, know the colour codes one, there's quite a bit, probably quite a bit of difference between the two. Um, yeah, really, really good idea. So while you're here, anything else you want to just randomly ask us? Or Mrs. C, she's only in the other room, I can drag her in here. Yes. One question I've always got, I've always thought about your uh, photography, Paul. Go on. What, does, what does Mrs. C do? Whilst you're out shooting. <laughs> what does she do while I'm out shooting? <laughs> well, most of the time, as you know, she's normally with me. Um, yeah. When she's not with me, she's normally doing the housework, to be honest, because I, really? I don't give her a lot of chance to catch up with the housework. Uh, and as I'm always sat in front of this computer trying to put videos together, um, I'm quite lucky, really. I'm a lucky man. Lucky man. And I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm a lucky man. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much. And when she's out with me shooting, she'll, she'll quite happily sit on a rock, wander off and go and do her own thing while I spend, you know, half an hour, three quarters of an hour, two hours piddling around with a tripod. So, um, yeah, yeah, she's, she's a pretty decent photographer herself. All right, she, uh, uh, shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she is. <laughs> she is, she's pretty good. Um, we can't really take that away from her. She's got a good eye. She knows she's keen and yeah, she, she used to teach photography, uh, teach um, art. So she basically knows the rules of thirds and depth and perspective, you know, perception and things like that. So she knows what a picture is about, but to actually put it into camera form, yeah, she's pretty good at it. You know, can't really take that away from her. But then, you know, I did teach her everything she knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not everything. <laughs> um, but no, yeah. Nice. Yeah, no, uh... she's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, no, thanks for that. It's brilliant. I'm going to crack onto that now. I'll um, find the images. I'll bring them up. And I'll do the best I can to explain everything there is to know. And you've got a little project to do now, Mr. Anthony Winch. You've got to watch the video. So I'll, I'll jump in on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And you can be watching it while the, I'm talking about it. As soon as you put the link up, I'll watch it straight away. Good man. I expect <laughs> a comment as well then. Right. I'm going right. to leave you to peace. And I'm going to crack on with this. And I'm going to find these images. And it's good to talk to you both. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch up another time. You have to come out and have a play one day. Yes, definitely. Oh, it's got a bit fuzzy then, you sound like Metal Mickey. <laughs> that's a blast from the past, isn't it, Metal Mickey? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, apart from that, absolutely amazing, thank you. You're right, welcome, yeah. more than welcome. I know it was a bit short notice as well, I gave you what, 15, 20 minutes to get yourself ready? Yeah, that's there we go, get <laughs> straight in there, get it sorted, no messing around. Right, we'll speak to you soon. Take care, Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Stay Bye. safe. Bye.
Okay, so planning. Uh, what would I do to plan this? Uh, I've been told about this place called Colorcoats Arch. Uh, we're going up to Whitley Bay. So I'd first of all, I'd open up my Google Maps. I type in Colorcoats Arch best I can because I'm not the best at spelling and it'll bring me up some images. Straight away I can see that it looks like an interesting place to go and visit. Uh, this was my first uh, impression of the area and it just so happens, oh look at that, just so happens on that, Paul Compton's Arch. <laughs> it's on me Flickr. Um, so you'd see these photographs and uh, yeah, it sort of inspired me to go that way. I then need to know where it is in relation to where we're going. So I zoom out on my maps. Uh, oh look, Whitley Bay, this is the area we're stopping in and colour coats is right down the road, look dead easy. So once I know that, and I know the sun's gonna be coming in from um, the right hand side. So the sun's gonna be coming in from this side, coming this way. Uh, I can do a sunrise, I switch it over to street view. I can have a bit of a look at uh, what it looks like. This looks like the arch there. There's no other places around that area. So this is definitely looking like an arch. Uh, we can then take our little man and try and drop it somewhere as close as we can. This gives you a street view. You can see the area we're in, obviously the beach. And this looks like the area we need to be down here somewhere. So the, the arch must be on this coast. Um, you check the tide times, have a look at the tide times, see what the tide times are. The next thing I look for parking. There's parking all the way along the street by the looks of it. Uh, there are some parking restrictions, permit holders. So it looks like I'm gonna to need to find somewhere to park very close. Um, but it looks like a dead easy walk, it's right on the main road and all we've got to do then is look like we head down this pathway and some steps down. So we should be alright in the morning. So the plan is get there first thing in the morning so I now have to look up uh, what time uh, sunrise is and uh, what time we need to be there. So that's the planning done, that's about all I'm going to get for planning for Compton style. We know that we're going to get there in the dark, me and Denise has never done it before and it shouldn't be too bad to find. It looks easy enough, why not? Let's give it a go. I'm gonna open up Lightroom. And I'm gonna to talk to you about these two images in Lightroom. Uh, the first image you can see on the left-hand side are these two. Uh, this is the finished article, this is the raw image. Uh, the raw image does look a lot different. I've done a little bit of processing on that. Um, this is the one that Anthony Winch was on about. Um, he wanted to see the color coats arch and that was the image. Uh, there is a video for this image. Um, I did actually video it back in 2018. It was one of my earlier ones. Um, I'll find the link and I'll put the link in the description and I'll also put up in the top corner for you somewhere up here, um, there'll be a link for you to go and see the video. Uh, also on the same subject as links, I will also link this video for Brighton. Um, it was when we were down in Dungeness and we headed up to Brighton uh, on the way home while we had the camper van. So I'll also put a link up for this Brighton image as well. Please check them out. Please leave a comment and uh, tell me what you think. Anyway, 2018, Colour Coats Arch. Um, let's start with this one, um, just because I'm already on this one as a subject. Uh, so Anthony asked me, uh, how did I stumble across this image? Simple, I stumbled across this image um, because I'd done a Google search, as I just said. Um, I was also pointed in a direction as anyone, you know, I'm going up to that area, so I basically asked people on my Facebook um, what was in the area and, uh, you know, what, what I could find and, what, you know, what I can have a look at while I'm up there. And they mentioned Colour Coast Arch. I've never heard of it, so I needed to go up and have a look. Um, I also knew the sunrise was coming up nice and early. It was a time of year that we could make sunrise without being too crazy. So that was a plan. So, yeah, that was my... Um, I didn't actually stumble across it, I was pointed in that direction and uh, I wanted to take it. Uh, he also says, um, anything I had to factor in? Yeah, well I've already mentioned uh, the weather, obviously we didn't want to go if it was stormy, but then saying that it would make an interesting shot when it was stormy. I had to consider the tide times, I needed water underneath the arch, uh, so I had to check the tide times, obviously the sunrise, so I had to check the sunrise. Um, I also had to check um, which way the sun was coming up, which we knew was coming up from the uh, east early morning. So it was a sunrise rather than a sunset image. Um, other than that, just things like parking, how to get there and what directions to go in. So that's the things I had to factor in. Um, and how many times did I visit? One. I only went there once. Um, I will go back again. In fact, I have actually been back there, um, but there was no water. I took some people up there when I did a visit over Christmas. Um, but that was the first time I've been there. It's the first time I've actually been to the arch and it's the first time I went to actually look at it. So yeah, I'd only been there the once to get this shot or to get a few shots. I never ever take one, I always take more than one. Um, so that was my planning involved. That was, you know, that's basically answering um, Anthony Winch's uh, questions for me uh, or for him. 
And I'm also going to do a little bit of post-processing for you and just to take you from the two images. Uh, raw image, very, very plain, quite bright and blown out at the top. Uh, if you look at the histogram, you can see there's all the information still there. I didn't actually blow those highlights out, so I've kept the histogram in and uh, managed to get the light. Um, we had a 10 second exposure. Uh, it was on my Canon at ISO 100 and we were on the 16 to 35. I had the 16 to 35 lens on because I wanted to get the wider view with the foreground uh, down here in the bottom. So that was quite important to me to get that bit of foreground as well. I didn't just want the arch. Uh, climbing down, it was quite hard to climb down in the dark. It looked very slippy. The ground was wet. It was early in the morning. So, uh, yeah, we had to be a bit dodgy, a bit careful, and make sure we didn't do anything too stupid. Uh, so, if we go back to the finished process, you can see it's quite a dark image. Uh, I tend to make my images quite dark. It's just the way I see things. Uh, my glasses are normally a little bit darker and tinted, and that's where I tend to see my finished items, you know, with the darkness. Um, and you can see I've clipped over to the darks on the uh, on the on the, on the uh, histogram. So yeah, process-wise, let's go into the develop module, just have a look to see what I've actually done to this. Um, you can see that I've had the highlights brought right down. This has managed to bring the um, shadows and everything, you know, or the highlights back into uh, reasonable seeing them. Shadows, I've lifted the shadows slightly, dropped my blacks, brought the whites up a bit. Uh, the exposure, I've actually dropped the exposure. So I could probably lift the exposure slightly and make it a bit better for other people to view because on my screens it's quite bright. So if I was to lift the exposure slightly and just to take that away from the you know from the dark area there, it just brings up those um, shadow areas a little bit. So I will do a copy of this and I'll put the image up for you now. And just let me have a know whether you like it with or without the darker uh, slider. So I'm up plus 12 now before I was on minus 41, I think it was. Um, so that's the two images. And that, they, you know, that's the way I tend to look at you know what I'm processing. Bit of clarity, bit of vibrance. Uh, I'm not going to go too technical. A nice vignette. I always like to put a nice vignette on. You can see the before and the after with a vignette. I always like a nice vignette. It sort of pulls you right into the middle of the image. Um, and again, if I go now into the local adjustment, if I put a brush on and press H. Right. So there's one local adjustment. I've got all this that's highlighted in red. Um, press O that'll bring up the red this is all the highlight is there so I would have probably done um, a contrast yeah we've got sharpness we've got some clarity and we're going to bring the highlights up that's basically what I did on that part of the image um, the top part of the image what have I done with there again you can see all this highlighted area all anything that's in red is the highlighted area again I brought up a bit of sharpness clarity and highlights that's just a pull out any of the tones in the in the rocks I like and then we're down here I knew that I'd done something on this uh, stripe so you can see where I've painted it in there where the red is um, and basically what I've done with that I've just give it a little bit of clarity brought out the saturation a bit sharpen that part of the image and I've brought the highlights up just to bring our eye down to that part of the image um, if I was to go over and switch those on and off you will see the difference these are the differences it's only subtle but you can see how the way it's punching out these rocks at the top there and the bottom and highlighting that little shadow. Dock it off again. You can just see it's just bringing it up enough to make it stick out and punch out. Uh, grad filters, any grads on there? Nothing at all. So we haven't added anything else. That's pretty much all I've done to that image. Quite a simple one for you. Right, let's go over to Anthony's image. Let's go back to the grid. Let's have a look at these two. Uh, as you can see, they both look very, very similar. Now, this is an interesting one. Um, I was down at Dungeness Beach, and uh, on the way back, we stopped at Brighton. And at Brighton, I knew the pier was there, and one of my ambitions was to shoot the pier um, before it collapsed into the sea. So I went down, shot the pier. I went back to get Denise and said, look, come on, let's go for a walk. And we went for a walk. So Anthony's question, let's just go back to Anthony's question and see if I can answer it before we go any further. Uh, let's click on this image and bring it up. Right, uh, let's find Anthony's question. And Anthony's question was, best images for the last six months, talk about the thought process and what made you take the image. Right, the thought process behind this image, as you've probably already heard me mention, is Denise saw it. Yes, I'm going to have to admit that Denise saw this image. Uh, she said, oh, it looks pretty cool, don't it? And she started taking the picture. And I thought, oh, that does actually look pretty good. I like the symmetry. I like the old. I like the new. 
Um, I like the way that the fog and the mist was really low, so it was disappearing into the sky. I like the fact the lights were on. We had a rainstorm coming in on us, so we were hiding from the rain and the, well, the weather that was coming across. So it was just one of those things that just looked really good with all the lights on. So I had to take an image. I took several images again, uh, slightly different positions, but I like the fact of lining these three up uh, across the image. I like the, the diagonal fact they lined up with threes. You got one, two, three items. I wasn't keen on this um, uh, line coming in, but it was too much work taking it out. Uh, I'm going to flick over now to the raw image. This is the raw image and it looks very, very similar. There's not a lot of difference in it. Um, you can see it was shot at 320 of uh, ISO, or ISO 320, and that is because I needed to up the speed. We're at F4 just to get that shallower depth of field and again to get the speed up, I'm about 640 of a second. So I can handheld it quite easily. I'm on the Canon again and I'm using a 24105. I think I only had the one camera on me at the time and the one lens. So you can see the two images, that one and that one, they're very, very similar. Let's go back over to this one. They're very, very similar. You can see the had a crop on it and it's it's pretty much natural to look at. Um, processing wise, now the biggest giveaway is a square crop. Um, if I can give this a quick square crop for you just to show you what it might look like. So I can crop them both roughly the same. That's somewhere around there. I think I lined that up on the thirds, if I remember rightly. Very close to the thirds. So we'll just crop that there just to see if they're both a bit more similar now to look at. They're not far off at all, are they? In fact, they're not far at all. Right, so I'm gonna bring the two images up together so you can see them. Right, so I'm gonna bring these two images up. Let's highlight these two images. I'm gonna go down here on X and Y, and this is gonna bring up two different images. We've got the selected image and the candidate. Uh, it should be vice versa, to be honest. Uh, this is the, the raw image I've done as a square crop. You can see the crop's not quite the same because um, I've just done it as you're watching me. The biggest image, you can, biggest thing you can see with this image is the light's not on. So I've had to turn the light on, as you can see over here, the light's been switched on. And then I've just basically done a bit of toning on them. I've just toned the um, highlights and the shadows so that I get these little bit of reflections coming on. The light seem a bit more piercing and you just get a bit more of a tone and a contrast to it. And there's also a bit of a vignette stuck on the image. So I haven't done a lot to that image whatsoever apart from crop it and turn that one light on because it definitely needed switching on. So that's your two images. Uh, the thought process behind this image. Um, let's go back to a single, oh, let's go back to a single image, which is this one. Single, let's come back and put the one on we want on, which is that one. Uh, what did, we, what did Anthony ask me? He asked me what the force process was. I told you what the force process was. The challenges, I've also told you what the challenges were. The challenges were the weather conditions. Um, it was raining, it was quite difficult. And uh, having to line it all up about getting wet. And would I do anything different? Um, not really. There wasn't a lot of chance of being able to do anything different. Um, so I'd stick to pretty much roughly what I got. So that's the um, two images that I was asked to look at. Um, I'm hoping that it didn't sound too stupid because I say I'm not very good at this uh, image working lark. No, I've answered pretty much all the, all the questions. Um, so I hope that helps. I'm just going to stop that for you. I'm going to turn Lightroom back off and I'm going to come over and speak to you. Right, so I hope that uh, was okay. I hope it was a bit interesting to those two images. I know there wasn't a lot. I wasn't very professional about it, but that's me. I don't do a lot of professional, but I don't do the clever thinking and all the technical stuff, but I tried to explain my thought process, tried to explain how and where I took the images and what went into taking them. Plus I've shown you a little tiny bit of processing on how I converted those two images. The color codes one, there was a little bit more work than the other one um, because it needed it. It needed a little bit more punch, a little bit more grit just to bring out the light and the tones. Yeah, hopefully it's been a bit interesting. I'm gonna do another video in about five minutes time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up about six or seven images. I've got a few on the computer here right next to me and uh, you can see them in this back screen. I've just brought up there. I've got uh, a dozen images, but up there, I'm gonna go through a dozen images, one at a time, and I'm just gonna explain a little bit about the image, uh, what I've taken, why I've taken it, and what I could maybe have done better for you. So uh, yeah, check that one out next. And uh, yeah, till next time, thanks for watching. I hope it was interesting. And if you've got any thoughts and comments, please leave them below. And uh, yeah, don't forget, like and subscribe, click the notification bell, and we will be back out doing landscape photography soon. I am sure we will. Till then, stay safe, keep hydrated, and uh, see you soon.